of how Cheryl and Jason competed against each other to become the Antichrist. We gotta bring it back to one of my favorite comics, Blossom 666. Ooh, that's a lot of money. I'm gonna say it again, that's a lot of sixes. So this series, Blossom 666, um, it is a mini series, so it's only five issues. So it goes pretty fast, but they're jam packed. We start off at Riverdale High. Riverdale always got something going on. And it's just a normal day. We see we got Archie basic ass walking through the halls. Now, this is Archie, you know, he lives life. He's very basic and mediocre and he gets rewarded for doing the bare minimum. And the talk of the school today is the Blossom Party. The Blossoms always got something going on. And you know, Betty's contemplating like, she's like, I don't know if I'm going. And Veronica's like, girl, you only live once. You're young. But Jughead's like, I don't even know how I'm invited because you know, Jughead, he's, you know, he's different. You know with Jughead, you know, he's weird. He's a weirdo. He doesn't fit in. If you know, you know. Meanwhile, at his locker, we have local high school genius, Dilton Doyle. He's getting ready because, you know, it's the morning time. Everybody's getting ready for first period. But all of a sudden, you know there's always got to be that stereotypical bully. And guess who the bully is? Reggie ain't shit mantle. Reggie, you are always doing something. Let's keep it all the way real. Reggie wouldn't have a storyline in none of these Riverdale Archie comics if he wasn't harassing somebody. But then somebody yells, stop, my bitch Cheryl Blossom. I love Cheryl Blossom in any incarnation we can get her. And you know, Reggie, you know, now all of a sudden his mood swing. He's like, oh, Dilton's my friend. What are you talking about, Cheryl? Because Cheryl's about to put his bitch ass in his place. However, it's different when you're dealing with a bitch. It's easy to pick on somebody smaller than you. But honey, pick on a bitch like me. And you know, Cheryl's a bullshitter. So Cheryl's like, I see right through you. Get your bitch ass on. And then, you know, Reggie, he gives her this cringy ass, um, you know, statement of, you know, you know, I've got a rep as a bad boy, a rebel, a rule breaker. Boy, you is about as bad as those people who give themselves nicknames. They'll be like, honey, my name is Brown Sugar. Granola. Nobody has ever called you that. Talking about brown sugar, girl, you are diabetic. But Cheryl checks his bitch ass and tells him to go on. And you know, Cheryl gives him advice of like, you know, girls like a boy that stands up for herself. And then she tells him, I hope to see her, see you at my pool party later on tonight. Now, meanwhile, we got Jughead begging Miss Grundy for an extension on his paper because, of course, Jughead's putting food over his homework. And Miss Grundy is like, hell no. But however, Jason Blossom comes in and vouches for Jughead. And, she, and he pretty much has convinced Miss Grundy to give Jughead an extension on his paper because this bitch got another crush on a student. And Jason knows she does. And she's like, okay, Mr. Blossom, you know what this energy is? Same energy as this. Like I was saying, Jason Blossom comes in the room and he vouches for Jughead to give him an extension because Miss Grundy was not about to let him pass on that shit. And Jughead shocked because he was like, I was just begging you and literally all Jason had to do was come in here, uh, bat his eyelashes, and you do it? And you know, Jason's looking at him like, honey, some people just got the juice. And then he leaves her an apple and Jughead hungry ass in the background looking like, oh, that should look good. But you know what they say, an apple a day allegedly uh, keeps the doctor away. We shall see. And you know, Jughead's ex and uh, Jason, because they don't really talk. One is rich, one is just uh, weird. Um, he's asking him, why did you vouch for me? He was like, you know, well, let's just say you owe me one and I'll see you tonight at my uh, pool party. And you know, Cheryl and Jason, they're talking to each other. They're like, it's okay to throw in the towel because you know I'm finna be the Antichrist. And then Jason's like, honey, good luck trying because I already got my person. And Cheryl's like, honey, so do And they head home for the day. And they're getting home and they're looking where, for where everyone is. But they don't see nobody, not even the maid. And Jason's like, where is everyone? And Cheryl's like, honey, JJ, don't be so dense. What is with Jason in these apples? Like, it puts it back down and then we see it starting to decay and worm because it's showing these motherfuckers are rotten to the core. And they go down to the lowest level of the mansion and they see their parents in a little PTA meeting, shall we say, with the superintendent who just so happens to be the devil. I kid, I kid. And then of course they're lifting up an offering of red wine, but honey. And Cheryl and Jason just look at their parents in amazement like, oh memory and you know and the parents are lifting up their glasses of blood and they're like you know they're going all drake all you know i heard that you've been crying all night drinking all summer praying for your happiness hope that you recover all that type of bullshit oh note to self that was a throwback hello somebody and Cheryl's just like, hi, mom. Hi, dad. And Clifford and Penelope Blossom are like, hi, dear. Um, Anything eventful happened in school today? And of course, you know, Cheryl's like, bitch, this is Riverdale. Don't nothing exciting happen in Riverdale. Honey, the joke's about to be on you, though. And Penelope's like, you're right, of course, dear. But honey, you and your brother about to change that. Because one of y'all finna get to the throne of hell. And you know, Clifford Blossom, he's all trying to encourage his kid. He's like, I can't wait to see which one of you guys are going to usher in the darkness into the world. You know, normal shit. And then Jason's like, huh, no pressure, right, Cheryl, as they go back upstairs. And then Cheryl's like, honey, I'm not worried about no parental pressure. The only thing I'm worried about tonight is 
Honey, she's only worried about her pool party because, honey, let me tell you something, the great work begins. And while everybody is partying and playing truth or dare, Cheryl purposely dares Dilton. And Dilton comes with her. Meanwhile, Jason's mad because Jughead didn't show up to the party. Because he got a paper to write. And Cheryl brings Dilton into the world. She has a little gift for him tied up, ready to be sacrificed. So after they're all at Cheryl's party and they're playing truth or dare, Cheryl dares uh, Dilton to come out to the woods with her. Rule number one, never go out to the woods with a blossom. And Cheryl's all like seductive and she's like, I want to show you something. And guess what this bitch got ready for Dilton like a present. She got Reggie ass all tied up, ready to sacrifice like a pig to the slaughter. You know, and Cheryl's all nonchalantly just showing Dilton like pretty sweet, huh? Like it's a new menu item at McDonald's. Like, girl, hello, somebody. And, you know, Reggie's all scared because, like I said in the beginning, Reggie, it's all fun and games till you meet a bitch that's bigger and badder than you. So Cheryl's telling Dilton, honey, here's your chance to get your revenge. Let's kill him. Sacrifice him. And, Dilton, you should just be slicing and dicing by this point, even though easier said than done. But, you know, Dilton, he's a good guy, so he's like, I cannot do this. And Cheryl's like, honey. I dare you. Because remember, they was playing I dare. They was playing truth or dare. I dare. Hello, words. Come back to me. And then we flash forward to later that night, and Dilton is furiously washing off his hands, and he is in a paranoid fit. The next morning, as you see, the Blossom Place is trashed from the party the previous night. However, they got made, so doesn't really matter. Cheryl's going for her morningly run because a night of sacrifice will do that to you. And Jason brings her coffee. However, since y'all both competing for the throne of hell, I would not trust him. He, what if you try to poison? So I'm going to sum this part up. These two were just uh, recapping the night before and how they each had a victim. Cheryl's uh, victim, of course, was um, Reggie uh, at Dilton's hands. And then uh, Jason, he started preying on uh, Ethel Muggs after Jughead didn't show up. But see, Jason wants the details of what uh, Cheryl and Dilton did in those woods. But, you know, Cheryl knows, even from your twin, it's good to not play all your cards and keep some secrets. So later that day at school, everybody starts to take attendance, and they notice, honey, Reggie and Ethel are missing. Now, see, Dilton, you see Dilton right here, he's like, oh, I'm going through it in his head. He's all ticky, ticky, boom, boom. Uh, she, he don't know nothing about Ethel, but he knows something about Reggie. And when the teacher calls his name again, he just runs to the bathroom, because, honey, his stomach, his mind, body, his soul is all out of whack. And on the edge of town... Somebody mysterious is entering Riverdale that's about to shake some shit up. But you know, nosy ass Betty, she can't help but be, you know, Captain Save Ho. So she goes to check on uh Dilton after. And you know, Dilton is like paranoid. He just wants his chemistry sets. He don't want to get into all this killing and the sacrificing bullshit. And you know, Betty's all like, Dilton, I'm worried about you. What's going on? But really, she's just a nosy ass hoe who does that a uh, wholesome as apple pie bullshit. But before Dilton can even say what's going on, Cheryl comes to call Dilton. And Dilton takes off, which makes Betty think something is going on with these people. And Cheryl already knows Betty Cooper is a problem. Cheryl knows they got to do something to Betty because she's a problem. But right now, the police is at their house. Okay, so the Blossom Twins are getting home after school because, you know, they had a hectic day. And they see the sheriff there. And, you know, whenever the police is around, mood kill. And, you know, of course, Cheryl and Jason Blossom, they play in it cool. You know, you can't trust these gingers. And they're like, hey, Sheriff, how may I help you? And the sheriff is pretty much, because I'm going to sum it up for y'all. He's like, um, kids are being missing. And the last time they were seen was Friday at y'all party. And we know the Blossom parties always got some type of chaos to them. And, you know, the sheriff is like, honey, Reggie Mantle and Ethel Muggs is missing. And they were last seen Friday at your party. And right now it's Monday. So the math ain't mathing. And, you know, Cheryl ain't being shit. Cheryl's like, well, the last time I seen Reggie, uh, he was fighting Dylan. Dilton, so, I don't know, Dilton and Reggie was fighting, so she trying to frame Dilton, that bitch really ain't shit. And you know, for Ethel, they didn't really even notice she was here, but Jason knew he was here, because uh, once Jughead didn't come to the party, remember, uh, he started preying on Ethel. Cheryl is sending the sheriff in the direction of uh, Dilton Doily, because they got into a fight, remember, at school that she helped break up, but y'all know, we know as the audience, that Cheryl it had deal to do a little bit more. However, we don't know yet. And then a, a sheriff uh, just says, you know, okay, send my best to the Infernal Master, showing he's in on the satanic cult too. So, you know, the rich just eating the rich. So now that they got the heat off of them, back to the planning. Now, meanwhile, going through town, this mysterious ass shadow man is just, you know, looking at the town, casing it over, studying everyone. 
And at Pop's Chocolate Shop, we got Betty, Archie, Veronica, and Jughead. They're all talking about the recent events that's going on around town. And, you know, everybody else really isn't paying attention to it. But Betty, you know, uh, Nancy Drew over here, she's all like, something's wrong. They had us at that party for a reason. But you know how, like, even in these horror movies, it's always the smart, nerdy one who knows what's going on. And everybody else is oblivious because then we wouldn't have a plot. And look at that Shadow Man. There he go again. What is up with him? And Betty's like, honey, I talked to Dilton earlier. Honey, something, whatever happened at that party, the Blossoms have him scared to death. Something dark happened to Dilton because he is a shell of the person he used. And while Betty's like, honey, I'm finna get a better grip of what's going on around this town with the Blossoms. And the Shadow Man's like, honey, me too. Part five coming up next because it's about to get juicy. So now we get back to this mysterious guy who we see just by the way in the mysteriousness that he carries. He's out for something against the Blossoms, too. So later that night, behind the bla the bla Blossoms, uh, words come back to me, behind the Blossoms Mansion, of course, Nancy Drew, a.k.a. Easy as Apple Pie, Betty Cooper is doing some investigating. By yourself, like, girl, have you not watched any horror movie? And she gets deeper and deeper into the woods, and she finds something. But she finds Ethel Muggs, bloody, erratic, all over the place, distraught. Uh, Ethel turns around, she's like, who's there? Cause honey, mama been through a long night. And uh, Betty shines the light on her. She's like, honey, come to the light. And uh, Ethel's like, bitch, turn that light off. It's kind of like when your parents wake you up on a school morning. It's like, why do those school mornings are be the best mornings to get sleep on? I'll try to sleep on a weekend, wake up early. When I know I have to do something the next day, that's the best sleep I get when I know I have to wake up. And of course, Betty goes over to her and consoles her. She's like, honey, what's going on? Because you've been, been missing for the last two to three days. And she confesses that all the horrors that she just w went through came from this cave behind Behind the Blossom family mansion. So, of course, Betty Cooper, you know, beauty doesn't always come with brains, honey. After she just seen a bloody Ethel Muggs who's distraught and mind shattered, I'm gonna go into the place that made her that way. Sounds like a plan to me? Really? And see, this is what happens when you be too nosy. You find niggas like this who's looking at you like, bow down, bitches. Meanwhile, back at the back inside the Blossom Mansion, uh, Cheryl and Jason are like, honey, we got to do something about Betty. Mainly Cheryl, because uh, Jason's like, I don't give a fuck about that bitch. I'm trying to get the throne to be the Antichrist my damn self. I don't care what problems you got, Cheryl. Because remember, they may seem like they're working together, but they're both going for the same throne. And there can only be one victor, as we all know. But Jason's like, maybe it is time we get rid of Betty Cooper because she's a thorn in everybody's side. And honey, maybe once Betty's gone, you'll appreciate the game and me winning a lot more. And she's like, how are we going to bring her down? Killing her is pretty much too easy. And he's like, somebody as pure as Betty, corruption is a slow, torturous game. We're going to corrupt. And if y'all know, this gives me such cruel intention vibes because this whole comic screams cruel intention aesthetic meets the devil. But see, why these hoes is plotting? They're not alone. And somebody behind them is like, honey, I like that idea. And they turn around and it's the shadow man. He's a redhead like them. Can y'all guess what's coming next? Because the shadow man, he's like, honey, bitches count me in. And he's like, honey, y'all hoes don't know me, huh? but mom and dad do. And they're like, mom and dad? He's like, I'm your older brother, Julian Blossom. <laughs> 